students have just wrapped up one of the most difficult school years in recent history, at times filled with uncertainty as schools shut their doors, forcing families to the world of online learning. Now, the hospital for sick children says it's students who are paying the ultimate price, and they're calling for governments to invest in guaranteeing the safe return to full day learning in September. Three waves of the COVID-19 pandemic came and went. So did the fluctuating public health restrictions that saw schools closing, opening and closing again. The Hospital for Sick Children has been tracking students and families pre-pandemic and since the first wave. We saw a significant and sustained negative impact of the pandemic on children. Um, and their mental health. The study highlights the connection between increased screen time with online learning and video games to increase symptoms of depression and anxiety. 1,494 students participated in the ongoing study. The majority reported clinically significant depressive symptoms during Ontario's second wave, that is February to March 2021 including more than half of the 758 children 8 to 12 years old and 70 percent of the 520 youth 13 to 18, a significant increase since pre-pandemic. That was really quite sobering um, and very concerning. We do see that stress from social isolation has been a significant risk factor for children. The pandemic has exacerbated risk factors for families, job losses and food insecurity, for example. This study shows the same. Heightened economic hardships for vulnerable families had a negative impact on stress levels. These individuals ended up showing higher um, mental health outcomes in parents and in children. And those factors seem to interact with each other to make the mental health outcomes worse in both groups. Dr. Crosby adds that the research above all highlights the impacts of social isolation on students and families when physical schools are no longer accessible, particularly for families who are made further vulnerable. So it's really important that as we move forward and think about what needs to be put in place, how is it that we can support and identify uh, individuals who are, um, are vulnerable? How do we provide them with support and help before things become bad? Prior to the pandemic, 58% of students participated in sports and or extracurriculars. During the pandemic, that dropped to 27% and 16%. School is not just about in-class learning for kids. Uh, there's gym and music and recess and a lot of the things that, can, that uh, children look forward to and really make school school. The study investigators are clear in their calls. Public health measures have impacted students all year. And come September, kids need to be back to in-person learning. So what this really tells us is that we, we shouldn't do what we did last year for a second year. We shouldn't replicate the way we ran school, even when school was open um, in this coming year. We should try and run activities and school for kids as normally as possible. Now, the researchers also say it's important to, to provide supports and be, be flexible to students who are returning to school. While some of them might be excited, others might be nervous or apprehensive. They also cite uh, a former study, a previous study, where about 10% of students uh, who got went to online learning reported seeing an improvement and they were actually relieved to be doing online learning. So they said it's important to figure out why that was the case and also provide those same supports to those students.